Well, it's time to head back to the mansion. It's more password. And we're back on Dean's route with this one. It's uh, day 10. So if you remember, Dean and Dave were just uh, sharing a bed together and Dave was falling asleep when we left them. So let's pick things up as Dave falls asleep. But eventually sleep found me and I blacked out, nestled in against his broad chest. I don't know how long I was asleep for or how quickly I fell asleep once I was conscious of it. When I opened my eyes, I lay there for a few moments, my body feeling like, like it was underwater. Like most mornings, I was on autopilot, swinging my legs out of the side of my bed and stretching. Oh, coffee. I liked my room. It was on the top floor of our house, like an attic of sorts, but it also had a bathtub and a small study nook. The whole fourth floor was basically mine, as small as it was. Mum and Dad had downstairs, but that's where the living room, kitchen and other rooms were, obviously. I was halfway down the stairs where I could smell it. Or at least I thought I could smell it. That smoky scent that came with freshly made bacon. It reminded me I was hungry, as much as I felt a little guilty about eating bacon while also being friends with Roswell, and knew there was only one other person in the house that would be cooking at this time of morning. As I hit the bottom of the stairs, I became acutely aware of something wrong, though. Something very wrong. Looking towards the kitchen, I gulped, almost scared of who I'd find on the other side of the doorway. I wandered closer, closing my eyes, bracing myself on the doorway. Closer I got, a chill ran down my spine when I could recognise the familiar, cheery humming. The humming stopped, replaced instead with a low chuckle. As I opened my eyes, there he was, standing in front of the stove as if nothing was wrong. Oh, it's wrong, sport. You look like you've seen a ghost. He laughed. He was laughing, and all I could do was stand there watching in shock. If my feet didn't suddenly feel weighed down with an anchor, I'd have run. Asleep, all right? Our breakfast is almost done. Take a seat and I'll serve you up. Wait, no. No? Well, that's a surprise. Oh, coffee. How could I forget? Huh, like father, like son, right? Give me a second, I'll sort you out. No, not that. Dad, I... You what? I have a bad dream. I found myself drawn to the table, and the next thing I knew I was sitting down, looking at my dad as he continued to work in the kitchen. No, not a bad dream, I think. Now, what's got you down, little bean? Sophie? To think? Have a fight with your boyfriend? I... Wait, I don't have a boyfriend. No? Huh. Could have fooled me. He wandered over, setting down a mug in front of me. The darkest roast of coffee you could imagine. You still look half asleep. I'll drink up. I reached out for the mug and found it warm. But I frowned all the same. I needed answers. This was so confusing. Dad? I yes, son? What day is it today? I don't really know. Well, why? I shook my head, opting instead for another approach. What about the date? I don't know that either. Would you believe I forgot to charge my phone? Uh, Mom's already left for work, though, so it's just us today. No, that's not... He doubled back to the other side of the kitchen, bringing over a plate of scrambled eggs and bacon. Sitting next to me, handed me the plate, and I watched him take the first mouthful. It was less a plate and more like a shared platter of food with how much he made, but Dad was always a fan of big breakfasts. Dad? Yes? What's your name? My name? Oh, you know my name, Sport. He wiped his mouth with his arm, gesturing with the fork. What's your name, then? You should know mine already, give it the same, bud. I grumbled, folding my arms. That's not what I meant. What's the matter, Dave? Normally we're fighting over the bacon by now. You haven't even had a banana or touched your coffee, so something's up. I whined, not wanting to bring it up. You're real, right? Like, you're actually here, right? Of course I am. Oh, why wouldn't I be? Someone looks like he's needed some fatherly advice, though. And some breakfast, so eat up while I impart upon you some wisdom. I kept my eyes on him as I reached for banana. I didn't make a move beyond that, still feeling the whole ordeal surreal, given how real this all felt. 
What do you do when life gives you lemons, Dave? Well, you could make lemonade if they're too sour, but I know a few guys who just eat them as is. Embrace what makes them different is all. I don't... No? Uh, not relevant here? What about the one about the birds and the bees? Although all things considered, I don't think I need to worry about you fretting over where babies come from, do I? I chuckled as he did a flinch reaction, fighting it off and trying to remain composed. No, Dad, I just want to know one thing, and y you have to be honest, okay? Please? Of course, son, anything for you. Oh, what's up? I... I think I'm in trouble. Well, that's not good. Well, what can I do to help? I... I don't think you can anymore, because you're dead, right? He just looked at me, unflinching as I asked. He just grabbed a strip of bacon and flicked me on the nose with it before speaking. That's not very nice. Besides, I'm plenty helpful. Reckon I could help regardless of where I am. So what's got you down? Why are you in trouble? I gulped, whining. Dad, I just have this feeling I'm going to let someone down and that they're going to die because of me. Well, that doesn't sound good. What should I do? Well, that's quite the pickle. If it's that serious, I don't think there's really anything you can do. What if they die? Why well, everyone dies, son? If you do your best, I don't think anyone could be mad. I know I wouldn't be. But, Dad. No, but sport. Just do your best. He got up from his chair and wandered over the kitchen, stopping in front of the coffee pot to pour himself another mug. Now, anything else I can help you with? Ah, uh, but maybe make it less heavy if you can. At least until after you've eaten something. Can I have a hug? Ha, <laughs> is that all? Of course, son. Just a sec. I watched, shaking as he got closer. I closed my eyes, scared of if I was going to feel anything when he reached me. Part of me wanted that familiar touch, but an equal part was worried as what it would mean if I felt it at all. The steps got closer. The sound of his footfalls on tile getting louder and louder. But then they stopped. Everything stopped. And when I opened my eyes, I was right where I fell asleep. A massive brown greeted me as I looked around, Dean's broad chest acting as a secondary pillow. In fact, I wasn't even all that wet compared to my last experience with him, so even the drooling was a non-issue. I could tell he was sleeping well, as when I pulled back he was smiling softly. My mind immediately snapped back to last night as I lifted the covers, realising I was naked beside Dean. Part of me wondered if I was meant to have asked him to stay naked too, but that was hardly the priority right now. I eased away from him and got up. I looked around the room. I was still here. This mansion seemed like a great idea when we had left home, but now just looking at the bedroom I hated it. It was a reminder that I was now involved in something that I was only half sure even existed. Death or the risk of it was lingering over us. Apparently, if Oswin was, if what Oswin was saying held any truth. Even then, there were the visions I was seeing whenever I touched a vault. It was enough to make me not want to touch a thing ever again. I swung my legs over the side of the bed and rubbed my neck. It was sore. Maybe I just slept funny, but that was hardly the only pain I was feeling this morning, given the dream I just had. I got dressed and made my way downstairs. It was early, early than what anyone really should be awake, but I couldn't sleep. Maybe it's before dawn, but I didn't really have the thought to check specifics. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, I yawned, stretching again as I contemplated making coffee and sitting in the dining room. Looking around, I wondered what the chances were of Benson being around that I could offload that chore onto him. After all, that's what butlers were for, right? Still, there was no telling if he was even awake, and even if he was, his duties were to be to Oswin first, right? Thinking it over again, the thought of coffee made my stomach churn. It wasn't Dad's coffee, and for whatever reason, my mind had decided to play that trick on me. Having anything but his blend wouldn't be as fulfilling. Oh, Dave? I looked up, seeing Hoss frozen in place, staring at me as if caught off guard. My eyes darted down to the small black device in his hand, and the wire sticking out of it before he shoved it back into his pocket. Oh, you're up early. Uh, yeah, what? Why are you up too? What was that anyway? I gestured to his now bulging pocket with one hand while I rubbed my eyes with the other. Oh, uh, nothing important. Just something I had to, uh... Hoss scratched his chin while he looked me over, looking troubled. Uh, just something I had to take care of. 
The look I was giving him must have clued him into the fact I wasn't following, or at the very least wanted more information. Uh, just something Benson asked me about. Oh, all right. You're not going to ask me what it was? It's too early. So I get the feeling you're not going to be telling me anyway. A better question. Why are you awake? I couldn't sleep. Okay, and the real reason? You seem like you just woke up and didn't want to stay in bed. Which, all things considered, I'd assumed you'd have wanted to stay in bed. Huh? Oh, didn't think I'd, I'd notice you bunking up with someone? I felt my face go red. How much did you hear? Oh, I heard nothing unless you wanted me to pretend to have heard something. Ah, uh, um, no thanks, that's fine. You're going to be all right. I don't know, maybe I'll go get some fresh air or something. I should be fine. You sure? I really don't... The next moment, Hoss yawned, covering his mouth and stretching his back. You sound like you need sleep. I don't worry, I'll be fine. Well, if you're sure. I'm sure, promise. Well, if you're certain, I'll see you in a few hours after I had myself a little catnap. Night. He was bounding up the stairs before I could get another word in. My eyes were trained on the pocket he concealed something in. I wondered what it could have been and what he'd been up to. The morning was crisp and fresh as I stood looking out to the horizon. Perhaps it was the mountain air that made everything seem so alive. I smirked at the irony. Alive. Why was it that it was only recently that the whole concept of mortality was being brought up again? Someone's messing with me, right? Sighing out, I ran my hands through my fur, thinking back to my dream. At least I was pretty sure it was just a dream. Losing Dad was hard enough and something that I forced down on a daily basis. Something that just made it easier to cope. I missed him. Every day. But now? Now it was some cruel reality that had me facing my friends dying too. Not that I didn't have options. I could run away like a coward and let this be someone else's problem. Well, as Dad said, everyone dies eventually, right? But can I live with myself knowing that I had a chance to do something and didn't? It was much the same as staying here and risking nothing bad happening. If talking to Oswin had meant anything and seen things in the vault, the threat seemed real enough. Which only left one real option, and that was to face this head on. <laughs> like father, like son, huh? I smirked for all of a second, thinking about how I was unintentionally following in Dad's footsteps in some way. Maybe I'd make an alright detective if I could get my nerves under control. Dave, are you doing alright? I almost jumped, looking back and watching as Dean came to stand next to me. Just I had stuff on my mind. Nothing you did, just personal stuff. I shot him a glance, seemingly cutting him off from asking in the first place. Well, was I that obvious? A little. But I promise it's nothing you did. You don't want to talk about it. I didn't say that. But I didn't want to wake you. You seemed comfortable. Well, I was. After what we did, I was pretty drained. I smirked, shooting him in a look. What, only after going once? He chuckled, shaking his head. <laughs> well, don't test me on that unless you're ready for a long night, Dave. We stood around for a bit before he broke the silence again. Oh, it's nice out this morning, huh? I guess so. Oh, come on. Even without coffee, you have to admit it's pretty nice. See, look. The sun's about to rise over the trees. Dean pointed at a spot off to the side, and we watched as the sun began to rise over the trees. Being so high up, something about it seemed cleaner, but maybe less special than if we were seeing it from the horizon. Well, I guess next time I have to take you somewhere you can see it rise over the water. Next time? Well, assuming you're up early this early again. We could always spend every morning sleeping in if we can, too. Huh, doesn't bother me. Totally not as an excuse to tend to your morning wood, huh? He laughed, clapping me on the back. Hey, if the offer is there... But still, what's gotten you so feisty this morning? Feisty? Really? Well, you're more functional than normal. Well, if this is what losing your virginity does to you, then I wonder what it's going to be like after you get the real thing. Now is my turn to laugh, part embarrassed, part curious. Maybe. I think a lot of it just comes down to me just having decided something. Or something good? I don't know. Hopefully. Well, if I can help, let me know. Thanks, Dean. Well, I'm going to head inside and take a shower. Or maybe doze a little bit longer before we need to get up. Want to join me? 
Dean le leaned in and pressed his nose against my neck, grinning. You might want to, or at the very least have one yourself. What, do I smell that bad? Well, it's noticeable, let's put it that way. He leaned back in to kiss me on the cheek, heading to the back door. When he was back inside, I looked out to the world in front of me. I liked Dean. I really liked Dean. Maybe it was some of the qualities in him that reminded me of how carefree Dad was. Or maybe it was just that he was a dog while being confident that put me at ease. That, and I did find him quite attractive. Maybe it was just his fur or how big he was. Or now that I was better acquainted how big he was in other areas too. He was right though. Having a shower seemed to be the right call, and I headed back in to freshen up. And not with Dean, though. I felt that if I did, I'd end up with a repeat performance of last night, leading to yet another shower. It was quiet, despite having the chance to talk to someone already. I felt slightly lonely. It wasn't the faint hum from the coffee machine brewing. I'd have been in complete silence. I wondered if Benson was awake, as I assumed he'd probably come and make breakfast for Roswin at some point. Maybe there'd be a chance to talk. A sudden ding from the machine in front of me signalled that it was done. I'd already prepared my mug, the milk, and had the sugar on standby. I smoked at the idea of making a cup for Dean and taking it up to him. It seemed like something he'd do for me, but if he was showering or even just sleeping, coffee wasn't the way to go this time. Wasting no more time, I poured myself a mug of coffee and sighed out at the familiar scent. The sound from behind me made me spin around, leaving my coffee on the counter. Oh, good morning, Master Dave. Good morning. Oh, someone's up early, uh, having trouble sleeping. It's a long story. Well, don't mind me. I just have to fetch breakfast for Master Oswin. I didn't hear you come in, honestly. You're very quiet. Well, I do have my ways. You should be no stranger to secret passages by now. Oh. Oh, don't mind me. I'll be gone before long. What even does a guy like Oswin eat for breakfast? I've been wondering what someone with that much money has as their diet. A children's cereal. The blank look I was giving him made him shake his head, but he strode over the pantry to pull out a box from near the back. He's a man of uh, simple tastes. If I wasn't around, chances are he'd subsist mostly on his sugar-laden rubbish and instant noodles. Good thing he has you around then, huh? Indeed. It didn't take him long to assemble a tray of food before heading out of the kitchen, into the hallway leading to the foyer. I listened as he left, wondering if I could hear another door opening to hint where the passage might be, but nothing. It was my nose that was strong, not my ears. Taking a sip from the coffee, I reinforced my decision to stay up and wait for the others to resurface. Chances were that Sal and Hoss would be up first, followed by Orlando, then Roswell, Dean, then Tyson. Or at least that was my guess. But chances are that everyone is going to want breakfast, right? But maybe Benson was going to sort that out after he tended to Oswin. Still, prepare breakfast. I took another gulp of coffee before nodding to myself. Making lunch wasn't hard. Breakfast wouldn't be any different. Besides, there was just another thing I could do to keep them together. There were many options of what to do. I could grab all of the things out and just do toast and cereal to keep it basic. A fond smile found its way onto my face as I recalled the dream I had. While I couldn't do bacon and eggs, I could do the next best thing. Collecting the ingredients wasn't hard. I knew what to look for. Beyond that, mixing the batter up wasn't hard either. Okay, let's get this underway. I remembered once Orlando kept things warm in the oven, and given how many pancakes I was planning on making, I needed to make sure they stayed that way. Turning it on and putting it at the lowest setting should have been fine. The oven itself had a keep warm setting, so that should have been fine, right? As I cooked off the batter, I just thought of Dad, a goofy smile on my face. Maybe a part of it was how I looked forward to doing this for someone I loved every one day. By the time I was ready, I headed on into the dining room with the pancakes keeping warm in the oven. Oh, uh, good morning, guys. Uh... Good morning, Dave. I've been cooking. Uh, yeah, I figured I'd try making breakfast for everyone. You know, just... You know... I'm not sure I do, but seeing you high spirit is nice all the same. Uh, Sal, though. I'm fine. I'm just tired still. Not going back to bed? Or a nap? 
No. That's more Dean's thing. He has enough trouble sleeping as it is. I'd rather just put up with it for now and make sure I get a decent sleep tonight. Oh yeah, that whole keeping your sleeping schedule in check. Is that important? Dave, you know this, you didn't nap all the time. But napping is good. We chatted for a while while waiting for the others to arrive. One by one they filed in and sat down. When everyone was seated I went and retrieved breakfast. I wandered the oven and checked the pancakes I'd left in there. Not burning, so that's a plus. Okay, pancakes are good and... I don't know how I heard him come in, but I was interrupted with a quick cheek, kiss on the cheek. Oh! Well, good morning again, handsome. Need any help? Now nah, I think I've got it. Are you sure? Dean buried his nose into my neck and chuckled quietly. Well, someone had a shower, but didn't clean himself properly. I chuckled back, fidgeting while he held me in place by my hips. I'll have one after breakfast. Well, if I didn't have one earlier, I'd offer to join you. But you do smell enough like bear that you don't need any more of my help. Is it really that bad? Well, like I said, it's noticeable, but I can, well, I can only smell you when I'm nearby. I'd be more worried about what Tyson thinks. Why Tyson? Dean shifted on his feet a little, looking me over. Oh, no reason. Come on, please. Well, his nose must be pretty good, right? On account of, you know. Oh, well, maybe? He hasn't said anything yet, but I don't know. Well, as much as I like the reason why you're smelling the way you are, you need another shower. Promise me you'll have one after breakfast. All right, I promise. Good. Now I'm going to get some coffee in me and take the pot out for anyone else that might want some. With an affirmative nod, Dean wandered over the coffee pot and poured himself a cup, winking at me as he left through the door to the dining room. Shaking my head, I turned back to the oven and pulled the pancakes out, a task I'd set myself for I'd gotten distracted. Assembling the rest of what I needed, I made my way back out into the dining room. When we were all settled, we started to eat. Coffee was had, and while a lot of us seemed tired, there were smiles. Even I wore one, but... It was hard to maintain. I wasn't sure I was willing to go through with what I'd originally planned. Thinking about it while you're by yourself was one thing, but seeing all my friends at the table feeling that I alone was responsible for keeping them alive? Ugh, I don't feel so good. Well, what was that, Dave? He said he didn't feel well. Is it nausea? Or stress? You've had coffee, so it can't be that. Sal slid over a glass of water to me. I took it eagerly, drinking quickly. Geez, what's got into you? I looked at Dean and placed a hand on his arm. I wasn't sure if he knew what I was thinking, but his expression shifted ever so slowly to one of understanding. All right, uh, Sal, we'll be back. We got up and we led each other at the dining room towards the back door. Dean ushered me out, followed me close behind, and closing the door behind us, we had some level of privacy. If anything, Ding Dean bringing me outside was much like the night I'd saved his life. Or at least I assumed that's what I did. Dave, what's wrong? I'll be okay, I just... I just need... I doubled over, queasy. No sooner had I propped myself up on my knees, Dean was by my side, rubbing my back. Hey. Dean, what if I can't do it? What if I fail? Well, slow down. Can't do what? Fail what? keeping everyone alive. He breathed out heavily through his nose, patting me a little firmer on the back. Oh, don't be silly. No one's going to die. I went to retort, picking myself up enough, just enough to look him in the eye. The moment I went to open my mouth, he grabbed me roughly and kissed me. Stunned, he pulled me back and looked me dead in the eye. What did I tell you this morning? If I can help, let me know. What if you can't? And what if I want to try? Now what is it you want to do? How are we tackling this? We? I don't... Oh, come on, Dave. We're in this together. Scavenger hunt partners and, uh... Well, let's start there. But I insist on helping regardless, so what do we do first? I wrapped my arms around his middle and returned the gesture. He returned the gesture in kind. I was thinking of trying to piece together what I saw in the vault. Maybe try and see if there's something I can learn from that and what I can do to stop it happening again. Well, it didn't happen the first time, so let's count that as our first win. Well, our second win, though. 
Well, let's say that one can be you taking a shower. We're going to need help on this mission of ours, and I don't think two people smelling a bear is going to be pleasant. You don't smell that bad, though. Well, I'm meant to smell like a bear, but maybe throwing on some cologne could help. You, though, can smell like a bear later when it's behind closed doors, if you're that keen on it. I laughed, embarrassed, but it's doing wonders for my morale. Okay, fine, I'll go shower. Well, while you go do that, I'll go see if I can find someone who might be to help us out. I'll meet you out here. I wandered upstairs and took a shower. I didn't realise until I'd stripped down just how strong the smell was. It was entirely gone after I'd stepped out of the shower and dried off, but my mind lingered on Dean the whole time. We were going to be figuring out what happened. I needed to make sure I was well equipped for this. First up, my notebook. I had been intending on using it as a holiday scrapbook. This seemed to be a better use for it, all things considering. Who knows how much I'd need to try and remember, and having it all in one place seemed smart. Next up, phone. Just in case I needed to call someone or use something on it. I guess it could be used as a backup notebook. That's only an option as long as it stays charged. I'd already let it run out once, so having something like my notebook makes sense to have as my primary method of recording information. I stepped back outside, now much more ready for what I was a- aiming to do. Uh, what are you two talking about? Orlando was a giggling mess and Dean had a sly smile on his face when he turned to me. Oh, nothing important. Ready to start figuring this thing out? Well, I figured Orlando might be a good help here. Wait, really? Why Orlando? Well, gee, thanks for the vote of confidence. Well, Orlando's good at those puzzle games, right? This uh, is like that. That's not entirely wrong, I suppose. I don't know, I just assumed you'd have grabbed Roswell or... I don't know, but I like Orlando. Orlando is good. A nice save. Anyway, Dean's filled me on the gist of what we're going to be doing already. Uh, Where to first? I led the way to the greenhouse when we filed inside. The air was fresh and clean in here, but seeing the interior of it gave me a sudden flash to what I'd seen in the vault. Okay, so we're going to piece together what you saw in the vault, right? Yeah. All right, I can't say thinking about this sort of stuff is pleasant, but if it'll help... Dean shuffled uncomfortably on a spot, potentially having second thoughts about bringing Orlando in. It will. Promise. Well then, the first thing we should probably be asking is, what word did you use in the vault? Wait, well that's important. It all started there, didn't it? Why, I suppose that's fair. I suppose that's fair. I wouldn't have thought to ask that, that is all. Death cap. Deathcap, that was the word? You mean the mushroom, right? Yeah. Well, that's... Hmm. Well, I guess that's one way you could die. But if that's all it is, then I can just steer clear of mushrooms and we'll be fine, right? That's just the thing, though. What if you're already poisoned? Well, it can't be. I haven't touched a mushroom in a few days, and that thing takes six hours to kill. Well, I think I'm clear of that, right? No, that's wrong. Wrong? Yeah, I found a book in the museum saying it don't take six hours, but up to six days. Well, that means... I looked to Orlando who seemed thoughtful and was playing with the necklace around his neck. As long as there's no cross-contamination, we might be all right. One person will be a lot easier to save than multiple, right? He seemed to be talking to no one in particular, the grip on his necklace tightening. I guess? How likely is that? As long as no one tries cooking with them, we should be all right. I scratched my chin, worried. But you're the one that does most of the cooking. You and Benson, anyway. One of you could have done it. Now hold on there, Dave. Why would Orlando want to do that? I just... If he wanted to do me in, he's had plenty of chances. Been a few times where we've been alone, too. Really? That's a surprise, given the talk about... uh, You know, about your junk. As curious as he is about my junk, that's officially your job now, Dave. What? To look at... No, he gets a look at yours. We're getting off track. Okay, but I never did get an answer if it was the same, so... And you never will. Bears do absolutely nothing for me, so you can give up on that right now. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, I mean, more for me, I guess. Exactly. I have no worries about me trying to steal your boyfriend away. Kind of defeats the purpose of me inviting Dean along if I was going to take him from you. Didn't... Mm. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. I'm here and I'm happy to be. I'm sure Dave is too, after last night. 
Oh, don't tell me. Did it happen? Are you for an item now? Well, I wouldn't say we took that step, but... Wait, you did... Did you? Dean threw an arm over my shoulder and I could feel myself turn red under my fur. I was grinning like an idiot as Orlando danced from one foot to the next. Okay, investigation on hold. Give me the details. Well, should I tell him or do you want to? Oh, well, I don't know. Dave, I swear all that glitters, if you hold out on me now, I'll throttle you. Did you lose your virginity, yes or no? Well, yes, but... Great! Now, how did it feel? Better question, who was on top? Oh, I guess Dean was, but... I shot Dean a look, confused, and more than just a little flustered. He had a knowing grin on his face, but I didn't quite clue in as to why. As for Orlando, we just whistled, seemingly impressed. I got this big for your first time. Guess I didn't have anything to worry about. Well, I mean, I didn't think a finger would feel that good, so... Dean backed off as Orlando lurched forward, holding my mouth shut with a hand. A finger? Please tell me that we've not just been talking about a finger this whole time. It was a big finger. Orlando huffed out, smoke wafting from his nose as he turned on heel with his arms crossed tight over his chest. Well, that hardly counts. Well, very certain it counts. If it doesn't, well, I'm happy to go again. Orlando turned back to me, frowning. Dave, listen, don't get, don't go getting overly excited by a finger. You haven't even gotten to the best part. Oh. We'd gotten way off track, but it seemed as though Dean was having a good time. I was being honest, even I'd forgotten why we came out here originally. It was a nice distraction, at the very least. OK, fine, but we're way off track from why we came out here originally. All right, we'll put a pin in this for now, but when it happens, I want to know all the details. Fine, fine. Does this mean we can call it truce, at least? You had me worried there for a moment. Oh, sorry, bad habit I picked up from my goach. What's a goach? A gay coach. Goach. It's more efficient that way. Or at least that's what he claimed. Well, all right, so if it wasn't Orlando, who? You're getting ahead of yourself. We don't even know what he saw. I stopped listening, my eyes trained to a spot off to the side. A bunch of bags of fertiliser. I knew the others stopped talking once I started to move, probably just watching as I stood in front of the spot where I saw Dean die. It was here. I saw Dean sitting here, bloodied and dying. I couldn't see any wounds, so, given the word, I just assumed he was poisoned. By a death cap? Yeah. Well, it doesn't narrow things down, does it? Fertilising sometimes give off the same smell, but even then, without any clues, we're not going to get anywhere. Well, what if we narrow down the list of suspects? Well, okay, let's see. Who could have killed Dean? I hate to admit it, but Tyson? Now there's a suspect. Well, maybe, maybe not, not after, uh, not after recently anyway. I don't think it'd be him. Why not? Well, I should say he and I have had a bit of a talk to clear the air. I've already told me I don't think he'd be wanting to bump me off. What did you two even talk about? Sorry, can't say. Promised him I wouldn't, but it's nothing bad. Well, that's a relief. I don't completely trust that, but if you say so, I guess he's out of the running. Roswell? Roswell, uh, what about him? Oh, he's clever enough for it. Right, but not only that, when Dean and I went to get mushrooms, Roswell spent some time alone with him too. Hey, that's not fair. If we narrow it down based on that, it could be anyone. That's true. If you wanted Dean dead, he could have just done it while out in the forest. Wouldn't have that made it obvious who did it? It depends. If you made it look like a wild animal. Okay, that's enough. Roswell wouldn't do that. Wait, why? Well, he just wouldn't, okay? I guess that puts us back to square one. I scratched my chin, thinking about it. Roswell was for sure the other person had spent a lot of time with Dean on that day. Then I remembered. Dean? What? You said you've got to wash your hands before dinner, right? Please tell me you're joking. You should always wash up before dinner. I do. Uh, oh, most of the time. But why did you forget? Wait, you were talking to Roswell, right? Oh, well, that's right. About uh, what? Dean looked between as a frown slowly forming. Well, I can't tell you. Uh, not yet. Why? Because I said so. Now drop it. What could be that? I said stop. His voice was loud enough to rattle the glass windows of the greenhouse, stinging my ears slightly. 
I shrunk back, shuffling away a few steps closer to Orlando. Dean had his jaw clenched, staring me down. Please, I can't tell you yet, but I know Roswell wasn't the one behind it. He couldn't be. I'm sure of it. Still shaking from how loud Dean had yelled, I nodded quickly, backing down. Orlando put a hand on my shoulder and rubbed it gently while I watched Dean calm himself down. Sorry, just... It was a serious enough conversation. I don't really want to talk about it. No, I should apologise too. We both should. You know, I was hoping it was something like, I don't know, advice on wooing Dave? Dean pulled his gaze away quickly, scratching the back of his neck. Wait, was it? Dean grumbled, sighing out. Okay, fine, you got me. I didn't think I was doing a good enough job, so he clued me in on a few things. But not, I guess, the thing I filled you in on? My heart sank, knowing exactly what Orlando was talking about. Came up when we were looking for the gun that killed Benson, or something like that. Maybe, maybe just wanted to focus on the good things. All right, exactly. Only good things, promise. It better be only good things. I swear, if I find out that you need lube and you don't even ask me. Is lube important? No sooner had I asked the question, Orlando huffed again, with Dean chuckling at my half-joke. I was fairly sure that lube was important, despite Dean only using only spit, but he laughed along with the joke all the same. So Orlando threw his hands up, though. He knocked over a bag that was sitting on one of the counters nearby. As the contents spilled onto the floor, a pungent smell hit my nose. Hey, that's... Well, that'd be the ammonia and the fertiliser. Oops, if there's a broom, I could sweep it up. Oh, don't worry about it. So this is what death caps smell like? Well, not quite, but close enough. Would you be able to smell if you, if you ate one? A death cap, I mean. Or maybe if you threw up? Don't really know, but I don't want to really find out. I looked at the fertiliser on the ground, wondering, where did that leave us? We've gotten nowhere, haven't we? Oh, sorry, Dave. I don't think so. Everyone had access to the greenhouse, but motive? Dean went to say something, but he shook his head, staying quiet. Dean, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just thinking about it. What sort of things you need to feel towards someone else to bring yourself to want to kill them? My family. Your family... what? Has it in for me? Oh, no, sorry. But they have enemies. Some bad ones too, but I don't think that'd affect anyone here. At least I hope not. What kind of enemies do bankers even have, anyway? Or bad ones. Well, at least you know who could be looking for trouble. No one should have a reason to kill me, I think. Or no one here, at least. I sighed out, rubbing my face. So what I'm hearing is that we've got no suspects? Sorry, but it looks like it. Best I can do is say that if a poison does happen, we're prepared for that. Well, thanks for giving us a hand with this, Orlando. It means a lot. Not a problem. Anything for my best friend. Or his future boyfriend, if all goes well. Orlando! I could feel my face go red in embarrassment, made worse by the fact Dean was laughing things off. Well, I'll leave you two alone. I've got some things to do before it's time for lunch, and I feel you two might want some... You know... Orlando, just... That's not fair. Well, I'll take good care of him, don't worry. Much like our time spent at the river, Dean kept me close, and a lot of it was spent in silence. He had his hand in mine, and we just spent the time wandering the greenhouse. At least until it was time for lunch. We all filed into the dining room before we continued into the kitchen. I don't know why we didn't just take the other corridor, but perhaps you're all just intended on making lunch without checking with anyone else. We all made it for the kitchen to get started. As everyone moved around me, I figured I'd use the time to record what I'd written down when it was still fairly fresh. Dean died in the greenhouse, presumably by poisoning. Thankfully, if this ever comes up again, Orlando seemed to think we could deal with just one person being affected, but if it was more, we might be in trouble. Despite going through the list, the only thing we really had to go on was that Dean spoke with Roswell about dating me, and that's why he forgot to wash his hands. So we don't know if that was the reason he was like I saw him in the vault, though. I took a moment to look at everyone in the room. None of them looked like a killer, and with how friendly Dean was, who would want to harm him that badly? While I was writing down the notes in my notebook, though, something occurred to me, something I remembered seemed off. Hey, Sal? Yes? He wandered over from talking to Roswell about something to stand in front of me, looking confused. Is something the matter? Well, I looked quickly to Hoss, who seemed distracted, to a couple of others for gesturing for Sal to follow. I don't understand. Oh, what's wrong? 
It'll be quick, honest. Are you in trouble? Am I in trouble? Oh, no, nothing like that. I was just wondering if... Uh... So a couple of nights ago, you were in the conservatory, right? I... What? Not that I know of. Wait, what? But you were there. Maybe at some point during the day? No, I'm talking like middle of the night. You were kind of standing there just all... Uh... How would I explain it? I rolled my wrist trying to find the words. I didn't leave my room. Once I went to my room for the night, I just went to bed. But that's impossible. I saw you there. It didn't seem as though Sal was believing me. He just scratched his head. I know I saw him there. After all, I was on edge after talking to Oswin as it was. What if I show you? The conservatory. Right, then you'll maybe remember? Sal didn't seem overly pleased with the prospect, but didn't object to the notion, so we headed upstairs. As soon as we entered, my eyes went to the bookcase, remembering the reason I came in here that night. It's for Sal. Hmm. What's the matter? He wandered around the room for stopping in place for the bookcase, looking at it. This. Something about this right here feels... familiar. Right, that's where you were standing when I saw you the other night. But I was in bed, sleeping. What makes you so sure, though, Sal? I took sleeping medication. I got it from Dean. And honestly, it's not the first time I've taken it. It normally works pretty quick. Really? He began to fidget on the spot before sighing out. I haven't been sleeping well since we arrived. Started with Orlando fretting and being excited the day before we arrived, then him confessing, you worrying about Benson. Now it's my turn to fidget. I feel like I was keeping Sal from sleeping soundly. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. It's been rough beyond that. Would you believe that I found an axe in my room? An axe? In my bed, yes. You found an axe in your bed? I was yelling and Sal stepped forward to put one of his hands over my mouth and muffle me. Yes, a little under a week ago. I hid it under my bed, just... Well, waking up next to an axe was worrying enough. And it's still there? Yes, I believe so. I was planning on returning to the greenhouse later today. But who puts an axe in someone's bed? Unless you did it. Sal seemed to think about it a while before replying and scratching his chin. It might have been me. The more I think about it, the more I wonder if what I've been dreaming about haven't been just dreams after all. What have you been dreaming about? Random things, I remember. Been in the library at one point. Nothing beyond that, just looking around. There was another time I remember seeing Orlando. The whole experience was like cows underwater, blurry and distorted. The library. I looked back at the bookcase for turning back to Sal. Is that why you were in here, to go to the library? He shrugged, leaving me to wonder. Was Sal the culprit? Sal, did anything happen, to happen in particular that day, while you were in the library? Not that I know of. We went to the hedge maze, had that argument with Dean. Wait, hold on, you went to the library back then? I thought you meant like a couple of nights ago. Only thing that happened a couple of days ago was... Hmm, we had that sleepover, Benson was found alive. And that's all? I don't think I did all that much, given how tired I was. I ended up taking some more medication. I frowned, wondering, was this a pattern? Did it mean anything, or was I just still hyped up from investigating earlier? Is... was... uh... Was that all you wanted to know? Something still wasn't adding up, and I figured I'd lay it out on the table for Sal. Either he knew or he didn't, but I knew he was in the conservatory that night. It's not making sense, Sal. I know for certain you were in this room a couple of nights ago. And why were you in this room to confirm that? To go to the library? But... Sal pointed at the door, looking away from him before he turned to look at me. The library is over that way. You can't get there from here. But what about... 
I gestured to the bookcase, but all he seemed to get was a confused look from Sal and the slight tilting of his head. He didn't know. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't be more help. I just don't know what else I can offer you. Maybe Hoss would know more? Why Hoss? I remember having a talk with him at some point. I don't quite remember when, but... I stopped listening. Hoss was now starting to get suspicious again. First the library, then what he was doing this morning, now this. I guess I don't have much of a choice, do I? If it helps, I can make myself available if you need me to ask more questions. It seems to be bothering you still. He placed a hand on my shoulder and we left the room, although I didn't feel like I got very far. We headed downstairs and back outside with Sal heading off in the direction of the pool. Come on, Dave, think. I found myself thinking again outside. What would Dad do? What would the next step be? Was there a pattern in the words that had worked so far? Oswin said that this thing worked on trauma, so would it just be better if I let Orlando pick the words? He seemed to be worried about most things. Sal thought that maybe Hoss would know something. Given he knew about the library, it's possible he could have known Sal was there too. Roswell? Would Roswell know anything about what happened? He was smart. Dean gave Sal the medication, so maybe that was an avenue to consider as well. The other option was that I was going worry needlessly over something that wasn't going to happen again. There was no proof, no motive as far as I could tell, and that was possibly why I was finding this difficult. So I turned around. Uh, Master Dave. Oh, Benson. Hello. You uh, look troubled. More so than usual. Uh, whatever is the matter? I decided to try and piece together what the next danger would be. Get the vault to work again. Ah, quite a task you've set for yourself. How is that going thus far? Well, I don't really have anything solid to go off. At the moment it's just Sal, I suppose. Your crocodile friend? Uh, what about him? When I left the library after talking to Oswin, he was in the conservatory. Just kind of standing there. But he doesn't remember doing that. Does he sleepwalk, perhaps? I used to do so when I was younger. Sleepwalking? Indeed. Perhaps he sleepwalks and just decided to take a stroll. Or he has more of a skill for acting than Master Hoss. I doubt that. At the very least he didn't know about the bookcase entry, unless he's lying. Perhaps, Master Dave. Perhaps. What should I do? Do you think I'm worrying for no reason? Oh, not at all. Master Oswin expressed worry to himself this morning. You're not the only one wondering what the next uh, event will entail. But there will be one. Well, consider it an old sense reigniting, the familiar scent of murderous intent on the air, if you will. Not that it's anything remotely tangible, my boy, just an inkling this old otter has. Should I have a gun, a weapon, anything like that? Well, unless you wish to get accused of being a assailant, I would advise against it. The best I can do is state that I have no intention of arming any of you without express instruction from Master Oswin. Well, that's something at least. However, what? Benson stroked his moustache, seemingly thinking something over. It is uh, probably nothing. But I would potentially want to address that first. The prospect of a puppet is a dangerous one. A puppet? You don't mean... It is unlikely that anyone could use your crocodile friend to kill, but... With a little creativity, that's still one problem that's worth addressing, lest you wish for a massacre. I gulped at the prospect. If he was describing it as a massacre, what did he expect could happen? A big man such as himself would be a force in his own right, and putting him down would be somewhat of a challenge without being considerably armed. What do you suggest? Oh, talking to him for a start, Master Dave. Oh, where is he now? Rather than tell him, I wandered over the pool and Benson followed. Sure enough, Sal was sitting by the pool with his eyes looking at the water. Sal? He grunted in response, doing double take when he realised I wasn't alone. He scrambled to his feet as he noticed his Benson, giving him a brief bow. I'll be plain, Master Sal. Do you experience sleepwalking? Sleepwalking? Not that I know of. Fascinating. Why is that fascinating, Benson? If he does, then he is flagrantly unaware of it. But this might be of benefit to you. What is this about? Remember what we were talking about upstairs, Sal? Benson had an idea. Oh, pay me no mind. Consider just an act of passing down wisdom. However, I do have another question, although it is quite bold of me to ask this directly. 
What is it? Benson seemed to wait only a moment for asking his question, and he asked it bluntly. Have you ever killed someone, Master Sal? Sal's face paled, and he took a step back. Or perhaps just thought about it? To be perfectly honest, even if the predisposition is there, it's all I'm after. Benson, you can't go asking that. Have I overstepped the line? I meant no disrespect. After all, it's been... Yes, I have. The comment was muttered, but I could still make it out. It was an accident, but... Yes. Then perhaps we're in the clear, then. As far as taking a life is concerned, an accident doesn't constitute enough of a risk. Should I be worried? Oh, Benson wondered if he was sleepwalking, because... Actually, why were you wondering about that? Ah, allow me to explain. Someone that can be hypnotised, and those that are prone to sleepwalking, have some level of suggestibility. The things that you can convince someone to do or think while they're in this state is... Put simply, it's a means of rewiring the brain. Forgive the simplicity with how I say this, but convincing someone to potentially kill another is possible if the right conditions are met. What conditions? A predisposition to the action you're suggesting to them. In this case, requesting for the person currently hypnotised to kill another requires they have some inner desire to end another's life. What about that creativity you mentioned before? Ah, that... Consider it a loophole. One could still get the person in the trance to kill if they framed the suggestion in a different way. Say perhaps handing them a vial of poison and asking them to administer a dear friend some medicine or season their pot of food. They would be unknowing of what they truly held, but under the impression they were doing something innocent. But that's... Oh, terrifying. Indeed. While the potential is there, the likelihood of all this happening is very low. Have a decent sleep and you'll be fine, I'm sure of it. All right, I think I can do that. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen. And Master Dave, should you need anything else, I'll be around. When Sal and I were alone, he sighed out, rubbing the back of his head. Well, that... Hmm. I'm sorry, I thought that maybe having a second opinion might help. You're that worried. Yeah. After all, what if the worst-case scenario happens? She's already dead, so... He trailed off there, making me tilt my head. Cool. It doesn't matter, just someone important to me. He sighed, sitting back down and dipping his feet into the water. I'm sorry, but can I be alone for a bit? Oh, please, just we can talk more later. I headed back inside, leaving Sal by the pool. Something seemed to be bothering him, but I didn't feel close enough to him to really ask anything more. Under any other circumstance, I would have tried to stay and keep him company, but I had enough worries going on. Out of instinct, I decided to get some rest. Setting my notebook down on the side table and flopping onto the bed. It was only when I was there for a minute that I realised I wasn't in my own bed. A moment later, Dean stepped into his bedroom and grinned at me on his bed. Well, isn't this a nice surprise? Sorry, I guess I've stood on autopilot. I'll head back to my room if you want. Or oh, don't leave me all by myself. I sat up on the bed and watched as Dean wandered into his bathroom. He didn't bother closing the door and he called out while he washed his hands. Looking to take a nap? Maybe, I'm kind of tired. Want some company? Well, without thinking it over, Dean pulled off his shirt only to throw it onto the ground. What are you doing? What? I'm just getting comfortable. Oh, okay. And if you want it... Maybe it's because we already crossed that threshold, or maybe it's from Orlando's encouragement from before. Either way, Dean was a lot less subtle when he groped himself, grinning wider when he caught my eyes darting downwards. What? Like, right now? Or offer is there if you want it. And you? You, huh? Well, I might have some handy. Depends if that's what you want to do. What else is there to do? Well... His hand reached out to touch my face, his thumb gently rubbing the teeth that came up from my bottom jaw. You really haven't done anything with anyone before, huh? Is that bad? Well, I wouldn't say it's bad. It just means we'll need to go slow. I mean, I've seen stuff on the internet, so it's not like I'm entirely, you know, actually doing it. Hey, we've all been there, handsome. 
I whined softly, feeling somewhat ashamed that I was behind on that front. Hey now, it's all right. He got onto the bed and shuffled up close to sitting between my legs. He leaned forward, resting his weight on an elbow as he used his free hand to scoot under my head. What are the things that you want to do? Anything come to mind? I don't know, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. Where do you normally start? He leaned in and kissed me softly, bringing his voice down to an intimate whisper. Whatever you want to start. If that's just watching something together, we can do that. If you want more of what we did already, that's fine too. He rolled on to his side, still smiling at me. Really? I get to just pick? Well, not always. First couple of times I don't mind letting you pick so you get comfortable, but probably better if we find something we both want to do. What, like, who gets to be on top or whatever? Or something like that, but maybe other things? Like what? Well, what position or where we're doing it counts. Well, I'm not going to interrupt your shower time if you focus on getting clean. But if you want to have a shower together and also have a little fun, why not? So it's less spontaneous. I thought it was more... I gestured loosely, not really sure of how to describe it. Well, can be. Depends on where we draw the lines and how well we know what each other likes. If you tell me never to disturb you in the shower, then you'll never see me in there ready to love on you. So, no means no? His tone suddenly turned serious, but didn't lose any of its affectionate charm. Always. If that means in the middle of us doing anything. You say no, or even if I say no, we stop. Oh. Dean rubbed my cheek with a thumb and grinned at me. But believe me when I say I'm going to make you feel good one way or another. You happen to really like one thing in that lines up. I call that a bonus. Like what, though? Well, it depends on how much detail you wanted me to go into. Well, if you could do anything right now. Anything? Well, that's a bit dangerous. Sure, anything. If we do it right now, how do you want it to go? Well, then we would have made it to the bed, for starters. If I followed you more closely behind, I'd be holding up against the door to the room, loving on you from behind. I shifted to how Dean would treat me. Well, you need to worry about getting naked. Just push you up against the wall, and with a bit of prep, I just push myself up under your tail and try and see how loud you moan. I rise well next to Dean, whining slightly. My mind was now racing, trying to imagine what that was like. Sure enough, it was having its effect on me too. That's that's what you do. Well, something like that, sure, but maybe not for your first time. He leaned over and kissed my cheek, shuffling back away and stretching out. Well, think about it. If there's something you want to do or try, we can roll with that. Well, Dean shook his head, chuckling. Well, tonight, if you're lucky. But for now, I'll leave you be so you can tend with this. He reached over and gently groped me, making me jump. What about you? Are you, uh... Or well, maybe. Why? Want some company? I suddenly felt nervous, reliving the feeling I had when I stepped out of the shower towards Dean. Back then, I didn't take charge, and it was only a towel. Overthinking it brought my excitement down, though. No, I think I'm good, but tonight, maybe? Oh, sure. Dean and I cuddled for a bit before I fell asleep. He seemed to just hang, want to hang out next to me and wait till I woke up again. By the time that happened, it was almost time for dinner, and in hand we went downstairs. We filed into the dining room and I watched as Tyson went into the kitchen. I went to go help, but Hoss soon wandered into the kitchen. If Tyson was cooking, chance that he would need both of us helping, so I took a seat and just waited. A couple of the others were still standing, talking to one another, leaving me to my thoughts. It's been a long day, so I took the time to just zone out and think. I had a nap, so I wasn't the Thai kind of zoning out, but more the kind when Hoss was going on, on about a new anime, or when Roswell was talking about something about a new magic trick. There was a lot of information to go through, and not a whole lot of it made sense. I didn't think I'd really gotten anywhere, but for now that was fine, right? Baby steps were I needed to start, and any progress was good. When dinner was done and we were all seated, we dug in. Earlier in the day, seeing all my friends like this gave me a great deal of stress. But having taken things in my own hands, I felt better about things somehow. Perhaps it was just after trying to figure things out, it seemed less impossible. There was one final test, though, and that was where I headed after dinner. Okay, so let's see. I had my notebook in hand and flipped through the pages as I stood in front of the keypad. Almost a week ago, Roswell and I were right here trying to piece together something. He tried a whole bunch of words, but nothing. I reached over and typed in each of our names. Nothing. I then tried the old passwords again to see if there was any change, and again, they weren't what I was after. So what do I know about the vault? 
Sometimes talking out loud helped, getting all of your thoughts in one place and just laying everything out. No one else was down here as far as I could tell. I even closed the door to the room I was standing in. Oswin said the vault worked through trauma. That's right. The vault brings up memories of traumatic events, apparently. Stuff that I'd apparently survived through. That might narrow down the list of things this could be then, but still. Look at my notebook. I went through everything that had happened so far today. Not really much in the way of solid leads or even anything remotely coming to mind as far as who was behind it, except for one thing. What if... It's Benson. He knew a lot about what was going on in the inner workings of the house and knew all of the secret passageways. Not only that, if he can ease the arm any of us, he can arm himself and do just as much damage, right? If that was the case, why not just come into our rooms at night and just do it then? The rooms were soundproofed at least a little bit. I shook my head. There wasn't enough to go off with just that alone. I needed something more. Maybe if I think about what the other passwords had in common, which would then mean... Is there a pattern? There had to be, but what? Was it a cause of death? Was it the type of word? If I strain anything about any common thread or the next one, maybe the pattern was a little too obscure for me to be figuring out with what I had so far. Staring the keypad wasn't helping. I had to put something in to at least get me started. What was the worst thing I could think of? What was the worst that could happen? Breathing in deep, I reached out to input something. I'd been through it a couple of times before, and the moment I heard the chime I braced for the worst. Maybe bracing for it was the worst thing I could have done as a sharp pain coursed through my head. As it flashed in front of my eyes, I gulped. There it was. I didn't want to have succeeded in finding the password, the fact I did felt bittersweet. It was Sal, somehow, sleepwalking maybe, but I knew where I needed to go next. I came to on the floor of the vault. My head was spinning as so if I'd just been thrown about the room for a few minutes. How long had I been out for? How long had it been? Was it too late to intervene? Scrambling to my feet, I tore out of the room and headed upstairs in search of Sal. Sal! Calling out in the fire, I hoped he'd hear, or anyone would hear for that matter. Echo off the walls, but no response. Was it too late? Grabbing my phone in my pocket, I checked the time. It wasn't too late in the evening. Before I'd seen was any indication, there was still time before. Sal, where are you? Do I want to know why he's shouting in the middle of the foyer? Hoss, where's Sal? Oh, hold up there, Dave. Why do you want to know? He's going to kill someone. Uh, excuse me? The vault. It, have you seen him or not? Oh, upstairs, I think, with Dean. I turned away from Hoss and bolted upstairs, continued to call out for Sal. Sal! What? I looked at what he held in his hand, a small container of medicine. It's you. What's him? In the vault. I saw you. What are you doing right now? Okay, so I think you should stop yelling, then. I whined, shuffling anxiously on the spot while Dean placed a hand on my shoulder. Now, what happened? Massacre. Sal's going to... I replayed the events of the day in my head, thinking back to everything I'd learned with my eyes setting on the medicine in Sal's hand. What's that, Sal? Medicine. Sleeping medication, yes. Well, it's the stuff I take. I occasionally let Sal borrow some of the things that are a bit rough. But it's not prescription stuff, so that's fine, right? Well, I told you about that. I told sleeping medication too, right? But why? Well, after everything that we talked about today, I wouldn't mind just getting some decent sleep. What if taking the medicine makes it worse? Oh, or taking medicine makes things worse? What kind of medicine is it again, Dean? Well, they're tranquilizers. Oh, I think I see the problem. The three of us were left in silence with Sal's grip on the medicine tightening slightly. Sal? With a sigh, he pushed the container back to Dean, shaking his head. What? Well, what do I do? I only wanted... Dean and I looked at one another, uncertain. I'm sorry. I just... I wanted to... So I shuddered, and I wonder if he was crying, despite seeing no tears. Dave? Yeah? Well, I'm sorry, but I think I'm going to watch over Sal tonight. What do you mean? Well, Sal and I go back. I think it's best we just hmm, spend the night talking things out, so... Oh. Sorry, but, you know. No, it's okay. I think this is more important anyway. All right. I'm sorry. I guess I just didn't want anything like Benson to happen. 
Well, at the very least, bringing it up is a better thing than just bottling it up. Still, if you saw a thing, then I guess we can... Uh, Dave? Yeah? I'm sorry if I... If you thought I... He shuddered and lumbered past me almost in a daze. Well, Sal, come back. Dean, I... Or oh, save it. You meant well, right? Of course. Well, I trust that at least. Just let me deal with Sal and hopefully things will be all right in the morning. Dean stepped in and gave me a quick hug. Good night, Dave. I watched as Dean left, and sure if I'd done the right thing after all. On one hand, I wasn't sure if this was a case of me having stopped what I saw happening, or my intervention had just ensured it was going to happen. Still, I did all I could do. Dad had been proud? I wanted to feel proud, but something was nagging at me that I'd done something bad. Maybe this was just the cost of trying to keep everyone alive. I made my way to my bedroom and ran my hands through my fur. I was tired and was at a loss to know how I was feeling. I'd done the right thing by Sal, by everyone. The longer I stood before my bed, the more I felt I'd done something bad. Either way, I was exhausted. I sighed out and collapsed on the bed. Part of me was looking forward to spending another night with Dean, but all things considered, I understood why that wasn't happening now. Part of me felt guilty for wishing Dean was here. How much of that was just to do more stuff with him, I don't know. Drumming my fingers against my chest, I wondered what Dean was doing now, whether or not I should do something to make up for him. With a sigh, I figured there was nothing left to do except for turning in for the night. I stripped down and jumped into bed, thinking about what I could do in the morning. Maybe make him coffee? I have to apologise directly to Sal, too. Putting out my phone, I wondered if I should send him one last message before bed, but decided against it. Things will be fine in the morning, and I can explain everything to Dean properly later. But for now, it was time to sleep. There we go. That's the end of this update. And if you're wondering, there should be all the information you need to find the password, even though I've covered it up. As Ellery Queen used to say in his challenges to the reader, you now have all the information to solve the mystery. Well, at least the password. So if you haven't figured it out, good luck. And until next time, bye for now.